I mean, security is coming after us at the moment, so we don't really have much time. Hi everyone, welcome to Bambus. Start the montage. <laughs> probably wondering why I did the intro here. Well, I couldn't get to the sun and so I did it here, but let's go explore Bambus. It is really a great place. It really is a great place. I know because I've been through it all and I'm doing the montage literally at the end. Because it's a really big place. So the signs are far, far from the town. 15,000 people live here. 15,000 people. Let's go visit them all because we already have. <laughs> Wow, it looks like the water is actually bubbling up from under the tide. It's a little bit noisy here, but look at that. What a feat of engineering. It's an actual dike. It's, it's, they're not calling it a damn wall. And I'm not sure if you can see just what scale it is. It's huge. And it, it carries on for quite a long way down there. And it's all... Oh, barbed wire, barbed wire. And it's all purpose cut stone. I don't know if they put rubble on the inside but this is purpose cut stone and look at it. It's, it's a damn wall. They're calling it a duck. I don't know why they're calling it a duck but it's actually a damn wall. I'd be a little concerned with the plants that are growing out of it. Not too many but you probably don't want that growing in your damn wall. Wow. Wow. What a great feat of engineering and it looks old. I don't know how old it is. But it's huge. Okay, so you turn down the small dirt road next to the church and you come to the dam viewpoint. Also at some point in time, looks like it used to be a place. Big banyan trees. This was probably a fountain water feature. Big circular car park around. It's now just a little bit dilapidated, but the dam's still there. <laughs> You've got a friend now. <laughs> I'm not sure whether to walk up the ramp or the stairs just over there. Walk up the ramp or walk up the no stairs. But it is, it's very, very steep now. I'm just going to get forward a bit so you can see Mike's. Wow! Wow! Look at that! Look! That's a solar farm! That's a huge amount of water, and that's a mountain. Wow. When they say lookout point, they really mean lookout point. Wow. What are you that doing? I forbid you from climbing down that. They've got a little jetty. I don't know, maybe that just, I don't know, it should be fuller. And then you've got it all the way down that way. But there's a solar farm. I'm going to try to get to the solar farm. Deep drop off on one side, nice pathway, walk, and um, uh, there's little Tammy. <laughs> <laughs> that over there is the valve for the sluice, and it lets this water run out. So, the amount of water that is actually being let out at the moment is on. Whoops, accidentally closed the button off too soon. So the amount of water that they're letting out is actually on purpose. I reckon they could double up their power making if they chucked a few wind turbines up here. Definitely. <laughs> Two for one. And this is the Fernie Dam. It was built for irrigation. Jump forward. Oh, oh it's a video. <laughs> you can see the solar plant. It's just over there. Unfortunately, we don't know how we're going to get there. It is closed off and the guys haven't sent me an email back letting me go and see it. But it's 15 megawatts. That is massive. That means 20,000 houses. In other words, if they built another 15 of those, Mauritius could run fully on solar power. Just another 15. And it took them five months. Five months to build that. Wow. What an accomplishment. Well done, those guys. Like I said earlier, we don't have permission to actually go in. I sent a lot of emails, but obviously the, the email address has changed or something. So unfortunately that didn't happen. What I'm going to try to do is get a, a little shot over the gate and see 
what we can see because it is it is a thing. It's a it's a thing. I can see panels. Here we go. Solar panels. Take one. Drone over fence. Hope you get to see something, guys. Well, hopefully that's what a solar farm looks like. We did get closer. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to be a cool thumbnail. We've got some mountains, we've got solar panels, we got us looking awesome. Beautiful thumbnail view. <laughs> Not talking, just smile. Point, point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Smile. Please be good. Taking the stairs down. This is the stairs. They are uh, a little bit awkward to walk down. I'm actually going to walk next to them so you can actually see what they look like. Uh, they're very narrow, but somehow you feel compelled to actually walk down them, even though it's easier not to. Oh, I hope one of these just turns into a great <laughs> thumbnail. I really do. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Practice makes perfect. Ten out of ten. This is Saviour Church. Now, unfortunately, we can't get in because it's under renovations. But it does give us one little piece that we can get to see. If you see, the roof has been taken down. Now, this was the only church left in Mauritius that still had the original wooden shingles but they still have them here they are these are the actual original wooden shingles can you believe it this was on there I'll swing it around so you guys can have a look that's the church they've taken the shingles down that's amazing they're gonna finally have to replace them after all this time now this church has been on the 1880 map and there's an interesting story which I'll tell you about but I was just so excited to find these shingles that actually, I mean, it's sad we can't go into the church but I think it might actually be better because we can actually hold these shingles. These shingles are 110, 120 years old. Yeah and they were put up during Father Laval's time. Father Laval might have actually touched this. Yeah. I mean he actually might have touched, he might have touched the shingle and you know he's a saint. I think, I think that is pretty interesting and there are lots of them here. I, I, I don't know what they're going to do with them, but if I was them, I would sell them off. Oh, have them, the, yeah, hold the or something. Like yeah. Do something with them because they're here. There are actually loads of them. I mean, to take this, this one home as a souvenir. Yeah, maybe Father Laval touched this and it's, I, I don't know much about this stuff, but I think a lot of Catholics would be would be interested in this, would be interested in... in or just people were a part of history. It, it's a piece of history. It's, it's been up there. It's, they, these have been since 1880, so that's 140 years. 140 years. They've been sitting up there. And I mean, now... It's actually before that. I think the church like the 1860s. So 1860s. So the, these things are 160 years old. Yeah. Wow. Wow, and what a great church. There is a story behind it. Give me a second. Wow, it's two I think this is for an afternoon. Today there's a bit of a blood drive, so anyone who wants to come donate blood can today. And when they do these events here at the church, you can see they always bring some food. So they've got some pots of food. You can get some roti or biryani, uh, uh, quite, a, quite a few curries. Uh, there's some bells ahead. And I'll finish off the Father Lavelle story quickly. Because this isn't his first church. Okay, those are the bells. Ricky will get you better footage. I'll show you that in a minute. But this church here wasn't his first. They got together and they got a piece of land and they started building furiously this church for Father Lavelle. He didn't really want churches. He was like a very, a very um, unassuming man. And he decided, well, yeah, I'm not going to build a church. But then he realized that people needed to get baptized and people needed to get married and all that sort of thing so he thought okay let's build a church but everyone got a little bit over enthusiastic let's head in this direction and they built a really big one then a cyclone came and knocked it down and he was like no god said build smaller so they built this tiny little church which is huge 
interesting tree with things on it. I forgot about the most important bit. You see the beams in the church there, it's a little bit further back, but you can go back, rewind and have a look at the beams. Those were donated by a guy called Kunig, which is basically like where Turkini, if you've ever heard of Turkini, comes from. And weirdly, he was my, one of my best friends at school. So I went to school with the guy whose great great grandfather probably donated that land. And while we're never going to find it, Not the, land, the, the, the beams, the, wood, the beams. All the wood. They, he donated the beans and just over there is some land that belongs to the, the other people I went to school with, the Susiers. <laughs> so this is a really interesting time for me. We've got the Susiers in that direction who I went to school with and the Kunigs. Kunig, Kunig. The Kunig that I went to school with donated the wood for the, the church. Anyway, this is coming out of the massive dam that's just behind the church here. So, yeah, very good water management. Okay, I can't properly get to that building, but it does look like an original church building. And it could have been the house of Desiree Mead, the one who actually started Father Laval on the process of actually making a church in Mauritius. And that could be her house. Hmm. Long gang. How much are long gang today? For those who are interested in, in geolocations of places, we are on the west coast in the central region, just down from Port Louis, but above Flick and Flack. And but closer to Flick and Flack. Bambus has 15,000 people, but it doesn't actually have a KFC, although there's an advert for one. Check out that nice sunny store. Thanks, dude. This is the closest McDonald's and KFC. Well, this is kind of sad. This is the Bamboo's Farmer's Market. It's obviously seen better days. I guess those of you who voted that we eat at the uh, Bamboo's Farmer's Market probably didn't know it was going to look like this. So, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to eat here this time or probably any time in the future. I'm guessing that Maybe it closed down, maybe there wasn't enough uh, interest in it. Nicely ventilated. It is, it's a beautiful place. I think it would have made a really great farmer's market at some point. Pity that uh, it's now, now a bit of a wreck. So don't you worry, we're going to go try the House of Donuts. <laughs> this is probably why the farmer's market is closed. Because it's just better out here on the street. Well, this behind me. Is Independence Street. And you know what Independence Street is famous for? Not the House of Donuts, apparently. <laughs> A little bit disappointed, so two for two so far. Starting to believe that what Google says and what's in real life is not actually true. So no House of Donuts, no farmer's market. Let's hope the other two places exist. But I haven't seen a motorbike yet. <laughs> well, there is some good news. Third time's the charm, Riverside Food Court, it does exist, so let's go see what they got. As promised, Riverside Food Court, let's go see if they've got anything, and if they have a Riverside. This is the dough that's going to be made into my roti. Oh yeah. And can I come and film this? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And here it is cooking away. Yeah. Oh wow. Ooh. That looks so good. Thank you. Oh, we went so fast in putting it together. Yeah, that's fast okay. food. So it's fast food, it's already been made. Open it. Yes, please, just so we can have a look. Look at that, we're gonna go eat this out the back. And in case you're wondering why it's called the Riverside Food Court, there's a river. Okay, it's got a fence in the way, but there's a massive river. It's actually quite pretty. Mm. Oh wow, and you can see fish jumping. And, and watery things, watery lilies. And it, it goes back quite a long way. So that's pretty cool. But right now, right now we got some roti. Look at that. Mm. <laughs> Those are interested. Look at the size of that biryani. That thing is huge. Wow. 
Okay. Different. Mm. Oh, 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 wow, it's like really stuffed. Mm. 15 rupees, that is a lot of stuffing. And it's really big. Look at the size of it compared to your hand. Oh, wow, it is. It's a big roti. Oh, my mouth is watering so much. <laughs> oh, anyway, guys, I'm going to eat this. Yum, so, yum. Oh, oh, flaky, flaky, beautiful. Stuffed with veg filling. Uh -huh. What's up? <laughs> this you'll see quite often in, in small restaurants in Mauritius. They have a sink for you to wash your hands because normally there's not a public toilet or a toilet available at the restaurant, but you can wash your hands. And you're going to be eating with your hands, so uh -huh. get your wash Sometimes your face as well. But we won't show that part. <laughs> <laughs> a quick thank you to all of you who voted that we come here. How great was this meal? Okay, you guys didn't get to see it, but it really was great. And I'd just like to say thanks everyone for voting. That we come to the Riverside Mini Food Court. <laughs> wow, what a mouthful. The Riverside Mini Food Court. The Riverside Mini Food Court. Come get a roti or that biryani you saw. Wow, that thing looks massive. And you've got these great views. Totally worth it. So cute. What a cool soda machine. Yeah, we're making a mix. <laughs> Green apple and a dash of blueberry and a dash of strawberry because, you know, that's how we roll. Well, cheers, everyone. <laughs> Crispy apple, refreshing. Crispy apple, really refreshing. And we can carry on our way. Let's get on. Brian has forgotten about it. There's not really a sidewalk on this side of the road, but there's one on the other side of the road. So halfway there. And of course, big live live pool fans that live here. Stop. <clears throat> stop. <laughs> it won't stop, bruh. an oasis in the middle of bamboo well just on the outskirts but what's really remarkable is this behind me these actually look like mapu trees wow there's one there and they look like they're growing another one there in the little rockery but look at this great open space now i don't know if you can see it but there's a massive mountain over there so over there and that way is quatraborn with that mountain we're going to definitely go check that mountain out as well but for now let's just go have a look at this oasis Wow, what a beautiful spot to come. Not one mosquito yet. Not one mosquito. Good thing, because we didn't bring spray. Great little bridge to walk over. Unfortunately, the steps are not really designed for humans. They're more for giants. Have a look at the size of that. Whoa! <laughs> These are toilets behind us, but they're locked. I don't know why, maybe they open at certain times and not open at other times. Kids are busy on the Saturday keeping the canals clean so that you don't get flooding. Brilliant. This behind me is the Dragon Store. It's a really old proper authentic store I and mean, I would love to go in you see it's got the shutters on a bit of traffic noise if you don't mind me but unfortunately it's barred so you know it's one of those you stand and you order something and they bring it to you what a great old store so this is Beham snack and takeaway yeah. and the very nice owner allowed me to use his toilet thank you very much you're a lifesaver <laughs> <laughs> yeah look at all the pot plants they obviously have a green finger. There it is. This is the 
Bell El uh, Sugar Tower, which is pretty awesome. I mean, security is coming after us at the moment, so we don't really have much time. But this is actually Bal Al, which used to belong to Jeffrey. And we heard about Jeffrey Street just down the road there. Hope you guys can see it nicely or get Ricky's, Ricky's footage. But his mom was an African princess from Ghana or Senegal. How weird is that? And his dad was a reunion, well, a rich guy in reunion, who actually married the princess eventually and freed her and made him free. And he was able to, to get the sugarcane farm. And this is one of the old towers. Wow, how awesome is that? This here, whoa, I'm getting wet. This, this big piece of irrigation, this huge circular sugarcane watering machine is the reason that Fernie Dam was actually built up there. Come on, big alien thing. Let's go. Now it's being shy. <laughs> but yeah, like seriously, how much does this little piece of not sugar cane need to be wetted? We've just stopped here at the temple, so we're going to go have a look at that. And I think the main tower the big one you can see there, maybe we'll get a better view of it in a minute, it was actually built over one of the sugarcane uh, chimneys. There's an actual peacock. There is an actual peacock. Don't be shy. Oh no, he's walking the wrong way. No buddy, come back. Oh, there, there's more than one. <laughs> Oh, he's a little oh, he picked it! Don't go picking it! Look, 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 look. No, that was quite fun, actually. Oh, he came all the way from my area straight towards you. He, like, made a beeline to you. He knows he likes me. He thinks you get bring him food. Yeah. Lion. <laughs> Yeah, you give me a bit of fright. Okay, that's the many names of the temple. Ah, it is a little bit under construction, as you can see. But I'm pretty sure we're still allowed to come in. Uh, there is a huge elephant. Look at the size of this elephant. Oh, there too. It's like a small one next to it. <laughs> there's little Ricky. And up there is big elephant. <laughs> Lots of lions. They have a lot of lions on this one. I'm on the upper level of the temple here. You got three fierce lions down the side, and that's about it. You get a slightly better view of that. Yeah, I wish we could get the bigger one. <laughs> That naughty dog over there tries to steal my shoes. Shoe thief. Now what you gonna do? Brian's coming. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately the meat is finished at the Medin meat shop. Dogs on duty. It has started to rain. It is unfortunately raining, but I did want to quickly just let you know we are in Medin Sugar Estate. As you can see, it is quite a nice place. Uh, well preserved and well looked after. Uh, if you want to see a great sugar estate, we did one on Fernie. I'll leave a link somewhere that you can go and have a look at that. But what I did find interesting was this. This building. Have a look at these stairs. And those are great stairs going to double doors, going to a double building. I think I find that pretty interesting. I don't know why the dogs are barking at me. I'm a good person. No, they're being happy, yeah. Yes, I am doing B-roll from the car. <laughs> uh, for those who are wondering how Ricky got her footage, yeah, some of us suffer for the art, others sit in the car. That's a beautiful building there. I mean, it is an old building and so is that one. But this piece of machinery, that's, that's just 
Looks like something that a villain would kill James Bond with. <laughs> it's got a grabber up there and a pull it down and a, a little thing that is going to slot you through and you're going to pop up the other side there. Wow, that is gnarly looking. And you've got... Well, you can be lucky you're not sugar cane. Towers that come down and lift the sugar cane up and drop it in. Oh, there's more here. Oh, wow. No, this is where they put James Bond. Have a look at this. You got this... What is that? Where does that go? Wow. Oh, okay. Maybe that's the one that pulls it in here and it dumps it in there. This is starting to look more like the Star Wars one where they've got molten lava or something. But it's just sugar cane. Don't worry, it's just sugar cane. So Medin is actually a very, very old sugar mill. And the current company, the Medin Group, established in 1910, is actually now trying to do some diversification out of sugar so at the Medina estate here you'll find a lot of food crops and even a meat market that is a big wheel i wonder what it was used for it, it looks like there was uh, it comes from glasgow look at the that would have been chains lifting in here or oh, cog maybe it was a cog but it comes from glasgow this was actually made in glasgow and shipped over shipped over in a big ship from Glasgow. Glasgow was a, a big steel industry. I mean, really, really big. They used to make ships and things. So to make something like that, and then probably came on a ship that was built in Glasgow. So, wow, all, all circular. And you'll probably find a lot of the equipment here, a lot of the old stuff probably has the stamp of Glasgow or the stamp of Sheffield. Something steel works from the UK. <laughs> Come on, it's raining. <laughs> Beautiful mountain views and lush irrigated sugarcane fields thanks to that big dam that they built. Say that again. Is this rain or is this irrigation? <laughs> I'm really getting wet. I think it's a bit of both. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you can stop pointing now. <laughs> <laughs> Fresh. Yeah. There's it all in one. Mum. <laughs> <laughs>